Hello, my name is Dottie Lottie and I work here at the Art Gallery and I get to take our little star lovers on lots of wonderful art adventures. And today we're going to go on an adventure with two unusual artists. I wonder if you've heard of them. This one is called Picasso and this one is called Mutisse. Hmm, let's see what they get up to. This book is actually called When Picasso Met Mutisse and it's written by Nina Layden. was a young pig named Pegaso, and while the other piglets rolled in the mud and played games, Pegaso painted. He painted anything and everything, and in a most unusual way. Let's have a look. You can see here that you see this person that he's painted down here. He's got their eyes on top of each other, their mouth is up to the side, and their nose is on the other side. He has got a very unusual way of painting. At the same time, there was once a young bull called Mutis. Mutis was not like the other bulls. He wasn't interested in bullfighting. Mutis was happy only when he painted pictures. And he painted big, bold and bright pictures. You can see that Mutis is on this very large canvas with lots of different colours on it. In time, Word of Pegaso's talent spread throughout the pig provinces. Soon, art-loving pigs from all over lined up to buy his creations. At the same time, Mutis was getting famous in the cattle community. There weren't many households that didn't own a mooster piece. Pegaso and Mutis were becoming art superstars. But this came with a price. Everybody wanted to see them. There were art buyers, art sellers, art students, art historians, art groupies. It was an art attack. One day, Pegaso got fed up and said, I'm tired of this noisy pig pen. At the same time, Mutis declared, I'm sick of this crowded cow town. Needing a change, they both decided to look for a peaceful place where they could paint without distractions. So each of the two artists looked far and wide for the perfect spot. Pigasso found a lovely farm looking towards the east. That's Pigasso's farm here. And Mutis found a handsome farm facing the west. After Pigasso moved in, he went to introduce himself to his new neighbour across the road. At the same time, Mutis went to introduce himself to his new neighbour across the road. And that is how Pigasso met Mutis. And coincidentally, that is also how Mutis met Pigasso. At first, Pigasso and Mutis were friendly and welcomed each other as neighbours. But soon, things began to change. It started one day when Pigasso criticised one of Mutis's paintings. Criticised is a bit of a big word, but it means that he said some rather nasty things about it. Then Mutis made fun of one of Pigasso's. Mutis called Pigasso an art hog, and Pigasso called Mutis a mad cow. Mutis quipped, you paint like a two-year-old. And Pigasso retorted, you paint like a wild beast. Mutis raged, your colours look like mud, and Pegaso spat, your paintings look like colour by numbers, and things really got out of hand. I think if we have a look at this illustration, you can see that maybe there was a little bit of paint getting thrown around in this fight. Actually, I think there was a lot of paint getting thrown around in this fight. In fact, it was a modern art mess. Pegaso stormed off into his house. That Mutis doesn't like my art, he huffed. I'll show him. And Mutis bullied his way into his own house. I'll give that Pegaso something. He got really criticised, he snorted. Then a full-scale feud erupted. But it was a most unusual battle. Armed with ladders and buckets of paint, Mutis launched the first art attack. 
he started at dawn and by the end of the evening he had succeeded in transforming the outside of his house into a monster sized mooster piece. So can you see here that Mutis is painting his house in his very own big, bold and bright style. Not to be outdone, Picasso fired up his paintbrushes and in full view of the enemy counterattacked, he turned his farm into a huge and outrageous hawk of art. Can you see what Picasso has done here? We can see that he's used all those unusual eyes and mouths and noses that he did before but covered his house in them. The two artists then retreated into their houses and pulled down the shades. Picasso certainly did not want to look out of his window and stare at a Moutisse, and Moutisse had no desire to give his rooms a view of a Picasso. Doesn't sound like it's going to end well, does it? This presented a problem. There seemed to be only one solution. So without a word to each other, Pigasso and Moutisse each began to build a huge wooden fence right down the middle of their road. At first, Pigasso and Moutisse seemed satisfied. Both artists went back to painting by themselves, but after a while, Pigasso was surprised to find that he missed the bull-headed Moutisse. And at the same time, Moutisse found his studio empty without the presence of the pig-headed Pigasso. Pigasso pondered, hmm, maybe that Moutisse isn't such a bad artist. He does have some interesting ideas. And Moutisse moaned, that Pigasso may not look paint like me, but he does know what he's doing. Can you see here that they're each painting a portrait of each other? So Pigasso is painting a portrait of Moutisse, and Moutisse is painting a portrait of Pigasso. However, being naturally pig-headed and bull-headed, neither artist knew how to apologise to the other. So they did what they do best. They let their paintbrushes do the talking. Pigasso painted on one side of the fence and Moutisse painted on the other and each worked until they were exhausted. It was strangely quiet when they were done. Curious to see what Moutisse had been doing, Pigasso sprinted around to the other side and at the same time Moutisse galloped over to Pigasso's side. The silence was broken as the two artists began laughing at their amazing work of heart. I wonder what they painted, do you think we'll find out? From that day on, Pigasso and Moutisse became great friends. They happily took down the fence and shared their different views. A few months later, a big museum bought the fence. Pegaso called his side when Pegaso met Moutisse. And Moutisse called his side when Moutisse met Pegaso. And the critics called it incredible. when Pagasso met Matisse, that Pagasso had a really unusual way of painting. And his real life artist, Picasso, also had a really unusual way of painting and drawing. And today we're gonna to have a little bit of fun and see if we can draw like Pagasso as well. So you can do this one at home. You'll be able to find this sheet on the Arts Bundaberg webpage and you can print that out. And then you just need a dice. Now I've got this very flash big dotty lotty dice, but you can use any dice you like at home. Now the first thing you need to do is be able to roll the dice. So let's roll and see what number I get first up. This determines what face shape. So let's have a look. I've got one, two, three, four. So I'm going to have a look on my sheet and I can see with roll one, I have to draw this face shape. So let's go. So it's a little bit like this, isn't it? Down, around, like that. About right? Okay. Now I need to roll the dice again to work out what type of eye I'm going to do. So rolling the dice and it's a one. Oh, so I've got to draw this eye. Now I remember seeing this eye when Pegaso drew them. So this eye is a little bit like this. 
goes over like this. It goes in, uh, down the bottom and then we have the eye shape in the middle. Now, do we have one eye or two? Let's have a look. I've got one eye here and I've got one eye here. So I'm going to need to roll the dice again. You ready? Okay, let's hope I don't get that number. Five. So what eye shape have we got for number five? Here's number five. Ooh, we've got this eye. I'm going to do it down here a little bit. So we've got... two eyes. Now, next we need to give our person a face. So let's roll the dice again, see what number comes up for the face. Okay, we've got number two. So it's going to be this nose. Now, where would be an unusual place? Because we also like to put his noses in unusual places. So I'm going to say it's going to be down here. Okay, and last we have to work out the mouth. So let's roll our dice again and, oh, six. Okay, so down the bottom here is our dice number six, and we're going to add this mouth. That's really exactly like a beak, doesn't it? It's a very unusual mouth. And there we go. So that's how you play Roller Picasso and make your very own Picasso, or maybe Picasso portraits. Thank you for joining us for another great Dottie Lottie session. I hope all of our littlest art lovers, and maybe some of our bigger art lovers out there, enjoyed our story and art activity today. Until next time, have a dotty lotty day and I will see you soon. Bye.